Hello everyone welcome to Foster Recap, spoiler alert watch out, and please consider subscribe if you like our video. Movie begins, when Susan receiving a manuscript from her estranged ex-husband Edward Sheffield, Susan is an art gallery owner. When she attempted to open the book cover, but accidentally received a paper cut. Frustrated, she called upon her servant to unveil its contents. To her surprise, she discovered a book titled Nocturnal Animal, entirely dedicated to her, along with an invitation for a dinner during Edward's upcoming visit to Los Angeles. Susan, plagued by chronic insomnia and a failing marriage to the unfaithful businessman Hutton Morrow, confided in her friend about her struggles. Seeking guidance, her friend recommended a psychologist for assistance. Later, upon returning home, Susan became engrossed in the novel, which bore her name and the affectionate nickname Nocturnal Animals given to her by Edward. Within the gripping tale, a man named Tony Hastings embarked on a family trip to Texas with his wife Laura and their daughter India. Their journey took a harrowing turn when they encountered a trio of menacing locals, Ray Marcus, Lou, and Turk, who blocked their path. In a fit of frustration, India displayed a gesture of anger by showing her middle finger, it igniting the wrath of the troublemakers. Consequently, they forcefully diverted Tony's car from the road. Helpless, Tony witnessed the kidnapping of his wife and daughter by Ray and Turk, while Lou compelled him to drive Ray's car before abandoning him. Tony managed to escape Ray and Lou upon their return, seeking refuge at a nearby farmhouse to contact the police. Detective Roberto Bobby Andes, assigned to the case, collaborated with Tony in investigating the horrific crime. Together, they uncovered the lifeless bodies of Laura and India near an abandoned shack, where they had been subjected to unspeakable acts of rape and murder. Overwhelmed with guilt, Tony grappled with his inability to protect his family. A year later, Andes approached Tony, requesting his help in identifying Lou, who had been apprehended during a failed robbery and was now implicated as an accomplice in the gruesome murders. Tragically, Turk met a fatal end during the same robbery, leaving Ray as the sole remaining perpetrator. Although Andy's arrested Ray, they were forced to release him due to insufficient concrete evidence of his involvement. Approaching retirement and burdened by a terminal lung cancer diagnosis, Andy's took matters into his own hands. With Tony's collaboration, he staged the abduction of Ray and Lou. In an attempt to flee, Lou was shot dead by Andy's, but Ray managed to escape. Motivated by a strong thirst for justice, Tony tracked down Ray to the exact shack where Laura and India met their tragic fate. Ray confessed to the horrendous acts of rape and murder, mocking Tony for his perceived weakness. Fueled by a mix of anger and sorrow, Tony sought vengeance, ultimately killing Ray. However, in the struggle, Ray struck Tony with a metal rod, causing him to lose his sight. Confused and overwhelmed by sadness, Tony stumbled outside and accidentally shot himself in the stomach with his own gun, leading to his demise. As Susan delved deeper into the novel's dark story and intense emotions, memories of her past with Edward flooded her mind. She reminisced about their first encounter during college and the blossoming of their relationship. Susan's controlling mother, and Sutton, disapproved of Edward, believing he wasn't good enough for Susan due to his romantic nature and what she perceived as a lack of ambition. Despite her mother's objections, Susan defied expectations and married Edward. With each page turned, Susan faced the troubled state of her marriage to Edward, characterized by her frustrations with his struggling career and her dismissive attitude towards his dreams of becoming a writer. Over time, their relationship deteriorated, leading to Susan's infidelity with Hutton and their eventual divorce. Despite Edward's attempts to repair their bond, Susan revealing her pregnancy and subsequent abortion severed their connection completely. In the present day, as Susan approached the end of the novel, she made plans to meet Edward at a restaurant. Filled with anticipation, she waited alone as the restaurant gradually emptied, only to be left disappointed when Edward never showed up. Explanation This movie goes beyond being just a revenge thriller and adds emotional depth to the story. The movie uses two parallel narratives to show different aspects of separation. In the real narrative, we see a typical story of divorce and unhappy marriages, which is nothing new. People get divorced all the time. Edward and Susan's marriage falls apart, 
and it leaves Edward devastated. Susan decides to abort their unborn child, and Edward can't do anything about it except move on. But in the fictional world of the novel, Edward's feelings of anger, sadness, and confusion find expression through violence and revenge. The extreme brutality suffered by Tony, the main character in the novel, is a reflection of Edward's own emotional turmoil. It's interesting that Susan sees Tony as a representation of Edward himself. This suggests that her guilt and confusion about their relationship find a cathartic outlet in the story. As Tony seeks vengeance for the loss of his family and meets his own tragic end, it feels like a resolution has been reached. The End Thank you for watching our content. Over 99% seeing our videos without subscribing, it means small to you but it is very encouraging for us, please subscribe if you like our video. Please like, share and comment to support our efforts.